It was a Canadian exclusive interview, now making British headlines. In London's newspapers and on TV networks, the Nationals' rare sit-down with Princess Anne. This morning, we're also hearing from Princess Anne, the King's sister, ahead of his coronation. She told Canada CBC News that her brother won't be changed by the new role. Until the coronation, Princess Anne has dismissed calls for a slimmed-down monarchy, saying it doesn't seem to her like a good idea. Princess Anne is a true kind sister of King Charles, who always puts his brother ahead of herself. Even when it came to royal titles or inheritance, Anne always stood by her brother's side. She has a special bond with King Charles. It was only her selfless nature that made it easy to pass the throne to King Charles after Queen Elizabeth without any controversy. The moment of crowning has arrived. In the chair of St. Edward, and with the crown of St. Edward, King Charles King III of is acclaimed. But this time, Princess Anne has shared something strange with people. She gives a surprising message to King Charles, and people are in awe that possibly this message will create a clash between both siblings. What was this message? Join us as we are going to disclose this in our video. Early Years of Princess Anne Princess Anne's early life was far from the fairy tale many imagine when they think of royalty. Born on August 15, 1950, as the second child and only daughter of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. The Queen drives over to Clarence House to share this great happiness with her daughter as Britain rejoices in the birth of a baby sister for Bonnie Prince Charles. She became the Princess Royal. Growing up, Anne's life seemed charmed, but behind the palace walls, it was full of challenges. Her mother became Queen when Anne was just a toddler, bringing a whirlwind of change to their family. With the intense duties of the monarchy, Princess Anne was often raised by nannies and caregivers, but she always protected her parents' privacy and royal responsibilities, shielding them from the public's curiosity. As she grew older, Anne attended boarding school at Benenden, where she developed a deep love for learning and personal interests. There, she excelled in her studies, showing particular skill in sports and riding. It was during this time that Anne's lifelong passion for horses truly blossomed. Princess Anne is in hospital with concussion tonight after apparently being injured by a horse. Her love for equestrian activities would become a central part of her life, allowing her to balance royal duties with personal passion. Even while attending school, she was known to have a strong-willed, independent nature, traits that would define her as an adult. From a young age, Princess Anne proved her capability in balancing her royal responsibilities with her personal interests. As a teenager, she became a skilled horse rider, taking part in competitions and even winning several titles. Her dedication to the sport earned her the title of European Champion in 1971, and she went on to compete in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. Princess Anne had set out, and at this point, Candlewick looked good. Princess Anne was settling into another competent performance. Becoming the first member of the British royal family to do so. Her involvement in horse racing wasn't just a hobby, but a serious passion, and she was often seen at prestigious events like the famous badminton horse trials. In addition to her accomplishments in equestrian sports, Anne made history when she appeared on the BBC's television quiz show, A Question of Sport, in 1971. Her confident and witty appearance marked a rare moment of the royal family engaging directly with the public in such an informal setting. Despite her royal status, Princess Anne also used her platform to support important causes, one of the most notable being the Riding for the Disabled Association. Her commitment to the organization demonstrated her caring nature and her drive to help those in need. She was actively involved, lending her name and support to raise awareness for the cause, showing that even as a princess, she was deeply connected to real-world issues. After years of public scrutiny, Princess Anne's personal life became a topic of media fascination, and in 1973, she became engaged to Captain Mark Phillips, a former Olympic equestrian. The Archbishop now gives the ring to Captain Phillips, who will place it on the fourth finger of Princess. Their marriage after 18 years of royal duties and public appearances was celebrated by many, but it also marked a shift in how Anne approached her own life and responsibilities. In interviews, Princess Anne has always been candid about the pressures of her role. 
She once expressed how the life of a princess often comes with incredibly high expectations, making it difficult for her to maintain a sense of personal freedom. She also openly admitted her dislike for public walkabouts, a royal tradition where members of the family greet the public. Anne described them as uncomfortable, noting that they weren't her preferred way of engaging with people. Despite the heavy expectations placed on her as a member of the royal family, Anne carved her own path. She worked tirelessly in her royal duties, but also nurtured her personal interests, particularly her passion for horses. She often traveled alongside her mother, Queen Elizabeth, supporting her in official events, yet still maintained her independence and strong sense of self. And opened up about her relationship with her mother, saying the Queen always led by example and understood what made society tick during her seven decade reign. Her journey from a young royal to a respected figure in her own right is a testament to her resilience and determination, life of service philanthropy. Princess Anne has always been a prominent figure in royal duties, often seen attending important events and representing the British monarchy with grace and dignity. From her early years, Anne demonstrated her commitment to public service, with some of her most notable appearances marking significant moments in history. One such occasion was her first visit to the Soviet Union, where she represented the Queen and attended events in the 1970s, highlighting her role in diplomacy and peacebuilding during a time of tense international relations. This visit was significant, as it reflected her willingness to participate in sensitive issues, such as the acknowledgement of genocide. Over the years, Princess Anne has often been seen at Buckingham Palace, where she participates in official events and ceremonies. One of her most important roles is presenting medals on behalf of Queen Elizabeth II, celebrating the achievements of individuals from various fields. She also attends various royal meetings and gatherings, regularly representing the royal family at events like state banquets and cultural functions. Princess Anne is receiving the royal treatment in Papua New Guinea. At a local school, the country's cultural diversity was on show. Whether it's welcoming dignitaries or taking part in discussions on key issues, Anne has always stood out as a tireless and dedicated member of the royal family. Princess Anne's dedication to charity work is equally remarkable. She has spent much of her life supporting numerous causes, particularly those focused on helping others and improving lives. As the president of Save the Children UK, she has been at the forefront of efforts to help children around the world. Her charity work is not limited to the UK. Anne has traveled extensively, visiting countries like India, Africa, and the Middle East, where she's worked to raise awareness of children's rights and education. Her global reach has made her a symbol of compassion and advocacy on the international stage. In recognition of her tireless service, Princess Anne was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 1990, a testament to her lifelong dedication to humanitarian work. Her nomination, was a recognition of her efforts in child welfare and the considerable influence she had on improving the lives of children in the most disadvantaged parts of the world. One of Princess Anne's most significant achievements has been the founding of the Princess Royal Trust for Careers. Princess Royal Trust for Carers is an organization that supports unpaid or informal carers. An organization she established to support those who provide care for loved ones. Through this work, she has helped raise awareness of the challenges faced by caregivers and ensured that they receive the support and recognition they deserve. In addition to her charity work, Princess Anne has had a long-standing involvement with St. John's Ambulance, where she has been a key patron, contributing to its life-saving training programs. Her work with St. Andrew's First Aid in Scotland further reflects her commitment to emergency services and first aid education, ensuring that people are equipped with the knowledge to save lives. Princess Anne is also known for her involvement in the arts and sciences. As the patron of several organizations related to both fields, she has supported initiatives that promote cultural heritage and scientific advancements. Her role in art and science has helped to strengthen the connection between the royal family and the broader world of creativity and innovation. Despite her intense royal duties, Princess Anne has always managed to balance her responsibilities with her charity work. Her kind heart and strong sense of purpose have driven her to dedicate much of her time to causes she deeply cares about. Through her unwavering commitment, she has earned several titles related to her charity work, 
including the title Patron of the British Red Cross, which further reflects her role as a tireless advocate for humanitarian efforts. Princess Anne's life is one of service, blending her royal responsibilities with a deep passion for philanthropy. She has managed to touch lives around the world while maintaining her position within the royal family. Her work continues to inspire countless individuals to give back to society and contribute to causes greater than themselves. Leadership Roles Princess Anne has taken on numerous leadership roles throughout her life, excelling in education, philanthropy, and sports. For the last 30 years, I've tried to highlight that contribution wherever possible. And as president of Carers Trust, I'm particularly delighted to underline that message this week. As the president of Save the Children UK, she advocated for children's rights globally. Her leadership extended to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, where she became president, overseeing the preservation of war memorials. In sustainable transportation, she supported efforts to promote green initiatives. Anne also championed women's careers, encouraging female empowerment, particularly through her work with the Women's National Commission. In 2022, she received the title of Princess Royal, a role that symbolizes her dedication to public service. Additionally, Anne has held key positions in historical guilds and arts organizations, further cementing her legacy of leadership across various sectors. Love Life with heavy royal duties and her intense charity work, she finds time for love too. But how her love life becomes so special. Princess Anne's first marriage to Captain Mark Phillips was a highly publicized event. Mark Phillips, an Olympic equestrian, met Anne in the early 1970s at a horse event. They became engaged in 1973 and married on November 14, 1973, in a simple yet elegant ceremony at Westminster Abbey. The wedding was a grand affair watched by millions, but it wasn't long before tensions began to surface. Both Anne and Mark had their own lives and interests, which led to clashes. Anne's royal duties and Mark's independent lifestyle created distance between them. Their marriage further deteriorated when it was revealed that Mark had fathered a child with New Zealand art teacher Heather Tonkin. DNA tests confirmed the affair, leading to the breakdown of their marriage. They divorced in 1992. In 1992, Princess Anne married Timothy Lawrence, a naval officer who had been a longtime friend. Their wedding was more private, taking place in a small ceremony at Crathy Kirk in Scotland. After their marriage, the couple settled into a quiet life, with Timothy supporting Anne in her royal and charitable duties. They have maintained a strong bond and live together in a relatively low-profile manner. One of the most shocking incidents in Anne's life occurred in 1974, when she was the victim of a kidnapping attempt. Bill's plan was to kidnap the Queen's daughter for a £2 million ransom. But as he demanded she get out of her car, she famously replied, not bloody likely. A man named Ian Ball attempted to abduct her outside Buckingham Palace. During the dramatic scene, Anne's security detail fought back, and Anne herself showed remarkable courage refusing to comply with her captor. Ball was eventually captured, and no one was seriously harmed. In 1976, Anne had another serious accident when she fell off her horse at the badminton horse trials. She was thrown to the ground and sustained several injuries, including a dislocated shoulder and bruising. After a period of rest and treatment, Anne made a full recovery and was soon back in the saddle. However, a few years later, Anne faced another difficult moment. In 2002, her dog, a German Shepherd, attacked two boys on her property. Anne pleaded guilty to failing to control the dog, and she was fined. Despite the controversy, she was supported by her brother, King Charles, who stood by her side throughout the ordeal. Anne also faced significant personal grief when both of her parents passed away. Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8, 2022, at the age of 96. Breaking news, Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch, has died at the age of 96. And Prince Philip had passed away the year before, at 99. Anne, who had always been close to her parents, managed her grief with grace, often leaning on her siblings, particularly King Charles. As the family came together in mourning, Anne remained a steady presence, offering advice and support to her brother, who became king. Early Life of King Charles 
Now let's take a closer look at King Charles's early years in the royal family. King Charles was born on November 14, 1948, the first child of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. His birth marked the beginning of a new era in the British monarchy. Just a few years after his birth, his mother became Queen Elizabeth II when her father, King George VI, passed away in 1952. Charles, as the eldest son, was immediately named the heir to the throne. His early life was full of royal duties and expectations, but he also had the opportunity to experience a world far from the formalities of royal life. Growing up, Charles was sent to several schools, starting with Cheam Preparatory School, then to Gordonstown in Scotland, a school that had a reputation for discipline. Charles didn't enjoy his time at Gordonstown, often feeling isolated, and he later described it as harsh. Still, it helped shape his character. After Gordonstown, Charles attended Cambridge University, where he studied archaeology and anthropology. His university years gave him a chance to broaden his horizons, and it was there that he first traveled abroad for a series of educational trips, including a visit to Australia and the Caribbean. Throughout his early years, Princess Anne and Charles shared a special bond. Despite the pressures of being royal siblings, they were close and supported each other through many challenges. From their childhood days spent together riding horses in the countryside to the adventures they shared, their connection grew stronger. Unlike many royal siblings, Anne and Charles didn't allow rivalry to separate them. They knew the weight of their roles in the monarchy, but they chose to stand by one another, offering comfort and support. Both siblings faced the pressures of public life from a young age, but their relationship only deepened. As the years went by, Anne was always there for Charles, especially when royal duties weighed heavily on him. She stood by his side during some of the most difficult moments of his life, including the death of their mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Her support during the Queen's passing was unwavering, and she played a vital role in assisting Charles as he stepped into his new role as King. Princess Anne's loyalty to her brother was never more evident than during his coronation. She took on many responsibilities, helping to organize and coordinate the events, always ensuring that Charles had the support he needed. Her selflessness and commitment to her brother's success were unmatched. Their bond became even more evident when Charles was diagnosed with cancer in February 2024. Buckingham Palace just revealing moments ago that King Charles III has been diagnosed with an undisclosed form of cancer. Although Anne had her own demanding schedule, she immediately took on many of Charles's royal duties. She understood the importance of her role in supporting him and didn't hesitate to shoulder his responsibilities, even though her own calendar was filled with engagements. Her dedication to her brother's well-being is an example of the deep love and devotion they share. In addition to stepping up when Charles was ill, Anne never hesitated to question and challenge those around her when she felt it was necessary. One instance that highlighted her protective nature came when her sister-in-law Camilla went on holiday shortly after Charles's diagnosis. Anne privately questioned her, suggesting that as queen consort, Camilla should take on more responsibility during such a difficult time for Charles. This act of standing up for her brother showed how much she cared for him, putting his well-being above all else. Their bond is also evident in the way Anne has made selfless decisions for the benefit of her family. She once made the decision to exit her inheritance in favor of her brother King Charles, a gesture that spoke volumes about her love and devotion. Anne's willingness to make such sacrifices for her brother, even when it meant giving up something personally significant to her, is a testament to her character and the strength of their sibling relationship. Even with the challenges that came with Camilla's role as queen consort, Anne never allowed those differences to interfere with her bond with Charles. She understood the complex dynamics of the royal family, but always put her brother's needs first. Anne and Charles's relationship has withstood every test that came their way, and it's clear that their love for one another remains unshakable. Princess Anne's actions speak to her deep commitment to her brother, and her loyalty to him as both a family member and a fellow royal. The Queen's immediate family have shone during this period. On Friday, a grieving King Charles III delivered his pitch-perfect tribute for his mother while setting out his stall to become from an many members of the royal family. To deliver her message. Unlike many would expect of royalty, 
Anne takes care of her own makeup and hair, often opting for a practical, no-nonsense look. She's known to drive herself to events, showing a level of independence and self-reliance that is rare for someone of her status. Even when attending public events, Anne has been seen using portable toilets, further demonstrating her unpretentious side. Her humble approach to life shows that, despite her royal title, she is not concerned with luxury or unnecessary attention. When asked about retiring, Princess Anne has been steadfast in her refusal. Even as she approaches her 70s, she has made it clear that she has no intention of stepping back from her royal duties or charity work. I'll retire when I'm dead, she famously quipped, showcasing her commitment to service and her tireless work ethic. People admire her for this determination, often calling her graceful and unique among the royals for her willingness to stay fully engaged with her responsibilities. Her longevity in the public eye, combined with her dedication, has made her a beloved figure, different from the usual royal image many expect. In terms of fashion, Princess Anne may not always seek the limelight, but she is undeniably a style icon for the royal family. Known for her classic, elegant choices, she often opts for well-tailored outfits that emphasize functionality over flamboyance. Her wardrobe collection includes a variety of dresses and coats in timeless styles, with her hats being one of her signature features. Whether it's a formal royal event or a more relaxed outing, Anne has always stayed true to her unique sense of style, focusing on practicality and comfort. It's also worth noting that she is known for making sustainable fashion choices, frequently re-wearing outfits and making the most of her wardrobe. The royal most recognized for her thrifty dressing is Princess Anne, who frequently reuses handbags, skirts, and hats dating back to the middle of the 1970s, which contrasts with the fast-paced world of fashion trends. People have taken notice of her thoughtful fashion choices, and she's even been listed as one of the most stylish royals, a nod to her ability to combine elegance with practicality. She is often seen repeating dresses, which has earned her praise for being down to earth, particularly in contrast to some of the other royals who may not repeat outfits as often. Anne's approach to fashion proves that being stylish doesn't have to mean constantly chasing the latest trends. It's about looking good while staying true to one's values. In many ways, Anne's approach to public life has made her a beloved figure, winning hearts just as her late sister-in-law, Princess Diana, did. While some might think that Anne should be the next queen, it is often said that she would rather focus on her royal duties and charitable work than take on the ceremonial role. The passing of the crown from Queen Elizabeth to her son Charles was difficult, as it marked the end of an era. But it was handled with grace, particularly when Charles's marriage to Camilla was announced after Diana's death. The princess who spent her life in the relentless glare of the public eye died in a speeding car in Paris, apparently trying to evade pursuing photographers. In a respectful gesture, Camilla was given the title of Duchess of Cornwall rather than Princess of Wales, out of respect for Diana's memory. Over the years, Camilla has slowly worked to win the hearts of the British public, much like Anne did in her own quiet, steady way. While the transition of royal titles can be difficult, both Anne and Camilla show that grace, humility, and dedication to duty are at the core of royal service. Anne's down-to-earth qualities and Camilla's slow, thoughtful approach have made them respected and admired figures in their own right, each forging their path with dignity and respect for the royal traditions. Camilla's journey to her current position as queen consort has been one marked by both public scrutiny and quiet determination. When she first entered the royal fold, many raised eyebrows, questioning her role in the royal family, especially given the controversy surrounding her relationship with Charles and the aftermath of Princess Diana's death. However, over the years, Camilla worked tirelessly to gain the respect and value within the monarchy that she enjoys today. Through her charitable work, calm demeanor, and steady support of her husband, King Charles, she has gradually won over many who were initially skeptical of her place in the royal family. Despite her hard-earned role as queen consort, it's important to note that this title is not permanent in the traditional sense. It can be lost should Charles no longer be king. While Camilla holds the title today, it is dependent on Charles's reign.
Well, a title change is reportedly in the works for Queen Consort Camilla, expected to take place once Charles is crowned king at his coronation. But one thing is certain, Charles will always remain the king, regardless of the title his wife holds. Interestingly, many members of the public have often expressed that Princess Anne, due to her work ethic, dignity, and commitment to royal duties, would have been their first choice for queen. Anne, however, remains far lower in the line of succession, with her position far behind Charles, making the likelihood of her ever ascending to the throne extremely slim. Still, the sentiment speaks volumes about how Anne is regarded, with many believing that her no-nonsense approach would make her an ideal monarch. Yet, for now, the crown rests with Charles, with Camilla by his side. Camilla's journey to being crowned queen consort has been both remarkable and at times controversial. She was officially crowned alongside King Charles III during the coronation on May 6, 2023, a historic event that marked a new chapter for the British monarchy. However, this was not without its challenges. Just weeks before the event, Camilla had to cancel several public appearances after testing positive for COVID-19. Her absence from the spotlight during that time was seen as a setback, but it also gave her space to recover while the rest of the royal family continued to carry out their duties. Camilla's efforts to grow into her role as queen consort have been evident throughout her time in the public eye. Since her marriage to Charles in 2005, she has worked tirelessly to gain the public's acceptance and support. She has used her platform to champion a variety of causes, particularly those related to health, literacy, and the welfare of women. Her royal visits have taken her across the UK and the Commonwealth, where she has met with communities, charities, and individuals to offer her support and raise awareness for important issues. Through these engagements, Camilla has quietly built a reputation for her genuine care and dedication to the causes she supports, solidifying her place as a respected member of the royal family. When King Charles was diagnosed with cancer. Breaking news in the United Kingdom where King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. Camilla demonstrated her strength and resilience. During a difficult period when Charles faced health concerns, she stepped up to take on additional responsibilities, all while maintaining a graceful and feminine demeanor. Her ability to balance the demands of her royal duties while providing emotional support for her husband showed a different side to Camilla, one that was often overlooked in earlier years. Her compassionate approach during this time won her even more respect, both within the royal family and among the public. When Charles and Camilla's marriage was first announced, many assumed that Camilla would never hold the title of queen, given the public's lingering attachment to Princess Diana. Instead, it was stated that she would be known as Princess Consort when Charles ascended to the throne. However, as time passed and the public gradually accepted her role, the narrative shifted. Queen Elizabeth II, in a moment of historic significance, publicly declared Camilla would be crowned Queen Consort upon Charles's accession, recognizing her importance and the support she had provided to the royal family over the years. This official recognition marked a turning point as it solidified Camilla's role in the monarchy and her future became more certain in the eyes of the public. The coronation of Camilla as Queen Consort was a significant event that took place alongside King Charles's. The ceremony was a deeply symbolic occasion that included centuries-old traditions as well as personal touches that reflected the modern monarchy. Camilla, as queen consort, took an oath to support her husband in his role as monarch, further emphasizing her commitment to her new role. It was a moment of celebration, not only for her, but for the royal family as a whole. For many, it was a reminder of how far Camilla had come, from a figure once scrutinized in the media to a woman now firmly established as a key figure in British royal life. However, there have been whispers of change within the royal family. Rumors have surfaced that Camilla may step down from her role as queen consort, with some suggesting that Princess Anne might rise in rank. If these rumors are true, it suggests that something is shifting behind closed doors in the royal family's power rooms. Such a move would be unprecedented and would no doubt send shockwaves through the British monarchy. Many are speculating about what is truly going on behind the scenes and what it might mean for the future of the monarchy. 
While these rumors are still unconfirmed, they have sparked intense curiosity among royal watchers and the British public. People are eagerly waiting to see what will happen next, as the royal family continues to evolve and adapt to the changing times. Will Camilla continue in her role as Queen Consort? Or will there be a surprising shift in the royal hierarchy? As we watch this unfolding drama, one thing is certain. What happens in the coming months will likely shape the future of the British monarchy in ways that we cannot yet fully anticipate. With such intrigue surrounding the royal family, there is no doubt that eyes will remain fixed on them as they navigate this next chapter. Whether Camilla continues to hold her position as Queen Consort, or if Anne's role grows in prominence, one thing is clear. The British monarchy is in the midst of a transformation, and people are waiting to see what comes next. Share your opinion in the comments box. See you in the next video.